Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is Steve Crypto Siege with another day in the life, in the crazy life that it's a digital asset space. Good morning. Happy Friday to each and every one of you. Wow. <laughs> what an amazing time to be an early adopter in this new asset class that is the digital asset space. Let me tell you something, my friends. You and I, we're going through it right now. We're going through it. I just... You know, I imagine I was thinking about this yesterday. We we were uh, we went out. Me and Mr. Crypto Siege went out to uh, purchase a another car, and I was thinking to myself on uh, on the way there. I, and I don't know why, but for some reason, I was thinking. You know, it's going to be very very interesting five to ten years from now. Uh, just imagine, just imagine being able to say five to five to ten years in that, from now. And I'm just picking a crypto. And you can just say, for example, I don't even want to pick a popular one because people will get mad. So I'll pick something maybe not so popular. I'll pick EOS. Imagine five to 10 years from now being able to say, yeah, you, you remember when EOS did blah, blah, raised billions of dollars. You know, you remember when EOS was you know, at this particular price and it went to this particular price. You remember that? And we'll we'll have conversations about that. And the people that will have conversations about, for example, tokens like EOS, people that will be able to have these conversations will, pe will be people in the XRP community, right? Will be people, uh, I believe, in the Bitcoin community. In other words, Tokens that will have and and or communities that have st stood the test of time, stood the test of time, right? Where where the idea of utility and real world use case will rule the day, and that will have been proven out five to ten years from now, right? We say this on this channel all the time. <laughs> the powers that be are not concerned about Shiba Inu or Dogecoin, right? And I'm a big fan of Shiba Udo, but they're not concerned about that platform, blockchain, or it's decentralized, uh, quote unquote, decentralized exchange. What they think about at night is the XRP ledger and XRP. That's the thing that keeps them up at night. In any case, guys, I'm, I'm looking forward to that conversation with you, my friends, five to 10 years from now. I'm looking forward to those conversations. In any case, guys, this is your XRP Ripple Daily News. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk a little about James Wallace at the Ripple Swell event, because I think it's important to understand right, that where we're going. The definition of vision, my friends, the definition of vision right, is seeing it before the masses see it. In our business, we talk about this all the time. Find out where everyone else is going and then get there first. That is Ripple right there, my friends. Ripple is genius in motion. I, I feel like maybe they've been listening to my channel. <laughs> Find out where everyone else is going and then get there first. The CBDCs falls a right smack dap into the middle of that mindset. So guys, listen, this is your XRP Ripple Daily News in around zero to 10 minutes. Let's get into it. What, what happened to my coin gecko? What did I do? Let's see if I can pull up coin gecko here. We want to pull up coin gecko and uh, make sure this is refreshed. I refresh it again because, you know, the market is doing what the market does. Let's refresh. Let's see what's going on. The total cryptocurrency market cap currently, according to Coin Gecko, is eight hundred and sixty-nine billion dollars. Love Coin Gecko. I have the app. I use it every single day. The Bitcoin dominance is at thirty-six point nine percent. That's a better number. Bitcoin dominance. Is, Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin is currently trading at sixteen thousand six hundred eighty-one dollars. Ethereum is trading at twelve hundred fourteen dollars, and XRP is trading at thirty-eight cents. Lots and lots of double figure reds in the market. That's what it is because, you know, that's what the market does. What is the open network? <laughs> I have no idea what the open network is. Someone knows. 
because it's you know, it's got a two billion dollar market cap. Someone knows the open network. Interesting stuff. Um, uh, Chili's, of course, is up 18% on the seven day at 25 cents. We all know about Chili's. Trust Wallet token. I know Trust Wallet was at uh, the Ripple Swell event. I, and I'm wondering if the people in the community know something, right? Because this thing has been really doing this thing uh, over the last seven to 10 days, and maybe uh, the last two weeks to Trust Wallet token. Uh, but I, I believe the community apparently that knows something because it was over 100% on the seven day at one point. It's currently at 89% up. Trust Wallet token. We are familiar with the Trust Wallet. They, they or a representative was at the Ripple Swell event. I don't know if they spoke or not, but that's interesting uh, to see what's going on there. Certainly not telling you guys what to do with your money. You have to make your own financial decisions. I'm not here to tell you what to do uh, with your money, but I find that to be fascinating. This is an interesting article came from uh, Financial Times. Crypto Law put this out. Very, very interesting article here. Crypto Law says here, Gary Gensler's, this is from the Financial Times. Gary Gensler's SEC has focused on headline grabbing enforcement actions as such, such as charging Ken Kardashian for illegally touting crypto rather than tackling systemic risk in the market. That is a quote from this article here. It's powerful stuff. U.S. watchdogs play blame game over FTX demise. Regulators and lawmakers scrap over which agency, lawmakers and regulators, blame in each other over which agency should have oversight of falling $32 billion crypto empire. By the way, I'm going to have a, uh, some you know, some more information on someone who really knows what's going on in my next video. I can't wait to share that with you guys with the whole debacle there with FTX. And how did it happen? How did this do get into play and be put in place? And it's not as simple. It's not as, oh, this was a trader. And oh, he just happened to be trading crypto. And oh, he just happened to become a multi-billionaire. And oh, he just happens to have a uh, 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 speed dial to uh, polit uh, political politicians on one side of the aisle. Speed dial. Oh, you need to get a hold of SBF? Oh, yeah, I got him on speed dial. Oh, SBF needs to get a hold of one of us? Yeah, he has us on speed dial. An awkward pause followed one, check this out, <laughs> crazy. An awkward pause followed one lawmaker's questions at a hearing this week when they quizzed regulators about which agency was responsible for the monitoring, for monitoring the failed cryptocurrency exchange FTX. So some politician at this, this Senate Financial Banking Committee hearing asked the question, can you tell me who in our federal financial services regulatory administrative state was watching FTX to make sure no one there stole people's money? An awkward pause. ensued. No one had an answer. John Kennedy, a Republican senator from Louisiana, let me say it again, and this is not taking political sides, this is being grown up enough to not be naive to understand. For the most part, one side of the aisle wants you to win in this crypto digital asset space and one side of the aisle does not want you to win in this crypto digital asset space. I'm not saying that that side of the aisle might not want you to win in the traditional TradFi space, but we're not here to try to win in the traditional TradFi space. At least me in this channel is not trying to do that. 
It's just the way it is. The fact of the matter is the Democratic side of the aisle does not want you to win in this crypto digital asset space. One side of the aisle is beholden, in my humble opinion, to the banks, the powers that be, and its regulators. And one side of the aisle is not so much beholden to the banks, the banking regulators. In the wake, uh, oh, so let me let me continue reading this. John Kennedy, a Republican senator from Louisiana, asked banking regulators during a Senate hearing, "Was anyone watching this?" Great question. Now, I'm also not naive to understand that when one polit one side of the political aisle can get an edge up on the other one, they're gonna try, they're gonna do things like this because it's becoming quite clear and, and seeming factual that this tens of millions of dollars was somehow, <laughs> I'm talking about from XTX, FTX, somehow got put into the political coffers of the Democratic Party. How is that? How is that? Why are we hearing about political donations in the crypto uh, space in reference to a fraud platform and person? Why are we hearing about political stuff? How did that happen? We didn't hear that with the, the fraud that became Celsius Network. We didn't hear that with the fraud, um, uh, oh, not the fraud, but with, with Voyager. We didn't hear that about BlockFi. Where's the political stuff there? There weren't, there weren't any political stuff there. It was poor risk management. I mean, poor, 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 poor. And the fraud is going to come out of those. What? No political stuff. Why is why are politics and donations to political parties involved here with SBF? You got to ask yourself, why? How does the dude become this billionaire overnight? Because he's a genius trader? How is it that this contagion is 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 spreading rapidly? One, think about this, one digital asset entity after another going down. Why isn't Fidelity going down? Why isn't TD Ameritrade going down? Fidelity has a digital asset platform. TD Ameritrade is entering crypto. Why aren't they going down? Oh, because they didn't have any exposure. Why did they not have any exposure? BNY Mellon, custody thing. Why isn't BNY Mellon going down? Why aren't they affected by this contagion? Gotta ask yourself that. In the wake of the collapse of Sam Bankman Fried's $32 billion empire, which included a large U.S. affiliate, Lawmakers and regulators in Washington have sought to pin blame, to pin blame on each other for FTX slipping through the cracks. There's definitely a blame game going on, and we'll see more of it, said Ian Katz, financial policy analyst at independent research firm Capital Alpha Partners. Jan Yellen, U.S. Treasury Secretary, was among the officials Pointing to supervisory shortcomings. A fall of SCX demonstrates the need for more effective oversight of cryptocurrency markets, she says. Adding that the same protections offered in traditional markets should apply to crypto assets. Yeah, no, no crap. Why isn't that being done, though? Why isn't it being done? Got to ask yourself that. Why is it not being done? 
is because it's a slow moving government and the government just moves so slow. But the nation's top banking regulators, including the leading supervisory authorities at the Federal Reserve, FDIC, and Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, deflected, arguing that lawmakers, Congress, questions should instead be directed to the likes of the SEC Commission and Commodities Future Trading Commission. Oh, don't come after us, says the Federal Reserve and the FDIC and the OCC. You, you should be asking the Securities Exchange Commissions and the CFTC what's going on, what happened. Market regulators are the first place to start in this space, said Michael Barr, the Fed's vice chair for supervision, told members of the second bit of committee on Tuesday. They have existing authority, and we want to make sure those are fully utilized. Do you want to make sure they're fully utilized? Well, why didn't you? Why isn't there any regulatory clarity in this space? Critics of the SEC, whose chair Gary Gensler once described the crypto market as the Wild West, have argued that the agency is focused on headline grabbing enforcement actions such as charging celebrity businesswoman Kim Kardashian for illegally touting crypto, rather than tackling systemic risk in the market. They have also said. Gensler should clarify rules for digital assets. But the SEC chairs argued that existing security is large and sufficiently clear and has reported and repeatedly urged crypto platforms to register based on the assumption that most tokens qualify as security. All right, I want to go on about freaking stupid Gary Gensler. Catherine Martin, managing director at Rock Creek Advisors, um, agree. The SEC alone can't be relied on to solve this problem unless the agency is given a new mandate by legislation and resources to implement it. Like Gensler, Rostin Benham, chair of the CFTC, has argued existing laws are unambiguous. He has also supported a bipartisan bill introduced by the U.S. senators. We all know what does it mean. Asked at a conference in Chicago, this week, whether regulators in the broader industry had been too easily taken in by Bankman Free, Rostam Benham said, We always have to scrutinize ourselves to learn. But from my standpoint, I did what I could with the authority that I have. Again, both Gensler and CFT, SCC and the CFTC. This is about power grabbing asking for more power, wanting to regulate this space. And while they battle and argue like 14-year-old kids, people are getting hurt left and right, the people that they say they're trying to protect. And Congress is no better. My question to you is, why is Congress hesitant to move forward? What's stopping them? because it's politics at Congress that's stopping people from moving forward. Plenty of bills have been introduced, but they continue to be pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. Ledger X, a CFTC, I don't wanna talk about that. I'm distressed by what I've heard from you gentlemen. This is from a congressperson. This is a quote. I'm distressed by what I've heard from you gentlemen. Guardrails, safe and sound ways to deal with crypto, said Brad Sherman, a Democratic representative from California, who said to banking regulators present at the House Financial Service Committee hearing on Wednesday, this is a quote, you sound like Sam Bankman Freed. Only you're wearing long pants instead of shorts. Mm. Powerful, powerful stuff there. That's an interesting thing there, because the 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 the, uh, the backlash from this is important, right? It, it, it's going to be massive, and all and the politicians are going to do their thing to 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 uh, in front of the world to say that they're disgusted by it, but yet no one's moving on it. 
we'll see what happens from here. We have we have three different bank regulators, two different market regulator ambiguities, and at times limitations around jurisdictional scope, said Catherine Judge, a professor of law at Columbia. Part of what the entire fiasco reflects is the fact that there are ongoing costs to having such a fractured regulatory scheme. It is a mess. It really is um, a mess. Let me see something here. My thing for some reason messes up. I got, uh, I want a short clip from James Wallace at the Ripple Swell event that I want to share with you guys. I may have to just go to the Ripple site, the Ripple Twitter, and uh, find it there. But I can't wait to bring you this news, man, about the real deal uh, at, uh, in reference to Sam. Bank and Freed, I'm telling you, it is golden. It is golden. And uh, it's important to note it. That's October 5th. Welcome to Swell. That's not what I want. So Ripple is starting to put some um, highlights out. But I think it's important to understand re where we are really, really going. And that is the CBDC space. Like, like, you know, like Ripple doesn't try to push where it kind of goes. It, it it sits back, it looks and says, this is what looks like it's going and it attacks it. This is where we're going. Ripple tweets this out. James Wiles, vice president of central bank engagement. Unfortunately, this is where it's going. James Wallace, Vice President of Central Bank Engagements and CBDCs at Ripple, took the stage on day one at the Ripple Swell Global to discuss why that technology powers the XP ledger is primed for central bank digital currencies and exactly who will need to strategize for a CBDC, CBDC future. The government will be the designers of the Listen to this. XRP Ledger is, you know, world-leading uh, public blockchain which was built for payments and issuing currencies. So it's a natural fit for CBDCs. We've taken that and basically providing a private version of that for the central banks. Something that's going to be absolutely critical for the success of CBDCs you know, and the adoption of them is the relationship between the public sector and the private sector. As I mentioned earlier. You know, we view that the you know the public sector, the central banks working with the government, will be the designers, the rule setters in terms of policy, um, and the implementers of the platform for the core capabilities around wholesale and retail CBDC. But that the use cases will come from the from the private sector. The list just goes on and on and on. There's literally you know endless potential use cases. And what this is, is my friend, something again, it's our, it is our, me and Mrs. Crypto C's business mantra, find out where everyone else is going and then get there first. And when you get there, show up with a solution and answer to the challenge uh, or problem that that particular industry marketplace may have. And that's exactly what Ripple is doing. All right, guys, listen, this wraps up the XRP Ripple Daily News in around zero to 10 minutes. I hope it has been of value to you. If it has, do me a favor, hit that like button. And uh, it helps with the YouTube algorithm on YouTube. And if you enjoy the hangout tonight, today, don't please consider subscribing to the channel. Please consider subscribing and ringing that notification bell so you know whenever we go live or whenever we upload a video. I'm going to end this one like I do all my videos and remind you guys of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather that we remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys.
The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it.